14. We'll stay here just, I'm sorry, Revelation 14. I'm getting a chapter ahead of myself. I thought I was. Revelation chapter number 14. And we'll look at this just for a little bit tonight. This is a, another parenthetical chapter, and it just shows some, tells us of some things that we know will happen during the tribulation. Uh, it tells of, of uh, a little more about the 144,000 that were sealed to carry the message uh, to, to the world that, you know, that would hear, to those that would still hear, those that hadn't heard, to the Jews mostly. And so we're going to read this to you tonight, and then we'll make comments as we go along. But it, it shows the importance of this 144,000 along. Also, at the very end of the chapter, it tells a little bit about Armageddon. And friend, these things are future. These things are to come to pass. This is uh, God's dealing with, you know, God's dealing with man and his wickedness, and God's dealing with the nation of Israel. And so these things are shortly come to pass. And if, we, if the church was raptured tonight, then seven years would, would not, you know, seven years would go by quickly. But that's how, that's how quickly these things that were uh, after the rapture, this is how quickly things are going to happen when, uh, you know, after the Antichrist sets up and the, uh, the, the false church sets up and all those things that go on during the tribulation, it'll last for seven years. Uh, but that's the seven most horrible years in the existence of this earth. And, of course, God's got it all in control. He knows what he's doing. Uh, for the child of God, it's a blessing to know we're not going to be here. But we, we worry uh, or we are concerned for those that are going to be here after the tribulation starts. A verse, number four, verse number one of chapter number 14. John sin again. And I stood, and lo, a lamb stood on the mount, stood on the mount Zion, and with him a hundred and forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. These hundred forty-four thousand will be sealed with a seal, uh, so that nothing can harm them, nothing can touch them, nothing can kill them. And their mission is to to spread the message. Uh, to spread the message of, you know, uh, of the tribulation of things to happen, things to come. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and as the voice of great thunders, and I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders, and no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. These 144,000 are, are to be redeemed from the earth. And they have been chosen specially by God. And verse number four, these are they which are not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they were are without fault before the throne of God. So these 144,000 uh, near perfect uh, beings or near perfect people that are found and God uses them, God raises them up to carry the message during the uh, first half of the tribulation. Uh, for the, the time that they're going to have to do this, the time that they're going to be presented with this is, is another, I, I feel like it's another, uh, you know, another part of the mercy of God to, so that everyone has an opportunity <laughs> Uh, to hear the, the message of salvation, uh, not the gospel message, not the message of salvation by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus that we preach today, but the, but the, the message of, of uh, their salvation, the way they can get to God, and it's his, his, the way God does it, and the way God has set it up so that uh, everyone will hear. Uh, everyone will hear the, the gospel message. And these 144,000, they will, as they... Uh, gather around the throne of God uh, during, you know, during the, the very end as they gather around the throne of God they're going to sing a new song uh, they're not going to sing the song of salvation as we sing but they're going to have a new song that they sing and they've been redeemed from this earth they've been bought back from this earth and from the tribulation time and all that has gone on on earth I'm glad that I'm not going to be around to witness any of these things because the tribulation is a horrible thing and the more I study it, the more horrible I understand that it's going to be. Uh, with the rule of the, the Antichrist, 
and uh, you know, with the ten power kingdom that comes up and the, the wicked uh, worldly system of nations that come up and, and govern, uh, it's going to be a hard time. It's going to be a terrible time. And those that don't worship that beast, those that don't worship that religious system and that beast are going to per be persecuted beyond measure. Just can't imagine what it's going to be. Now we find in verse number 6, here comes another angel. There's another angel that's going to come, and he's going to broadcast the message to everyone. And his, his message is a uh, message of an everlasting gospel uh, that he's going to preach. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Now that's his message. And this angel that preaches the everlasting gospel, uh, it, it will be a gospel that goes through the airwaves. Uh, it'll be a gospel that's heard um, among all people. It, it, it will be such a presented uh, gospel uh, that people that don't even have radios uh, in the far out reaches of the globe will still be able to hear the everlasting gospel that this angel proclaims. So uh, how God goes about doing that is his business. I take it just exactly for what it says here that this angel is going to fly and he's going to verse 7 saying with a loud voice, uh, Fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come. That's the everlasting gospel. It's a message of judgment. Uh, I like, I, you know, I don't particularly like preaching messages of judgment, but God gives them once in a while and we have to do that. But this is the message of this, uh, of this angel. This is the message of that one that's, uh, going through the air preaching the everlasting gospel, and it is a message of judgment. And, they, and he's telling folks to give God the glory. Uh, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. Now, that's the message that's going to be preached in the day of the tribula tribulation. Folks are not going to hear it. Their opportunity is still there, but folks are not going to hear that. You say, well, Preacher, why won't they hear it? You, we preach the gospel today, you know, to many people. And preachers around the world are, are preaching the gospel to many people. And yet the majority of people are not going to hear that message. They will not listen. They will not hear. They will not uh, understand and, and, and come to a knowledge of the Savior uh, because their ears have been deafened and their Eyes have been blinded by, by Satan, but they get, they get the same gospel message that you and I hear today. And yet people will not listen. The preacher has a sword. I have a sword that I carry in my hand. And the Bible says it's, it's a two-edged sword. And it, it can, you know, out of this word of God that we preach, we can preach a grace and mercy and kindness and love, but also we can preach of the, the uh, terrible atrocities that God is going to pour out upon this earth, the, the wrath of God that's going to be seen, and what God does if we don't uh, let him rule our lives and let him reign our lives. We have that in this word of God, and yet uh, people won't hear. They won't, under, they won't understand. They, they don't want to, to listen to the truth. And so it'll be so in the same day that when this uh, angel that preaches this everlasting gospel, as he goes all over the earth, and that message preached that there will be those that will not hear. They will not worship the one that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. Now, and there followed, here's another angel. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. This the angel is, is given the message that the world system is falling. Babylon is falling. Uh, that new world order that is set up is falling. And it's fallen because uh, she has, as it is, you know, it said uh, she, she has made all nations to bow before the beast, to, dr to drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And she's made all nations bow to that beast, that worldly power. And as those that bowed, they're right in the middle of it, yet they won't hear what the, uh, God, the angel that's preaching the everlasting gospel. And it's amazing to me how men can become more wicked and more wicked. 
and yet that is going to fall. God's going to bring it all into judgment one day when, the, when his wrath falls upon this earth after the devil has had time to, to have complete control over everything going on earth. The Spirit of God is removed. The devil is, has, uh, you know, he's, he's set up false worship. He's r ruling with, a, with a, wicked, uh, a wicked fist. And as he goes about ruling with that wicked fist and that, all the evil that he can conjure up and, and uh, the pride of man is spring forth and one Antichrist wants to rule the whole earth and rule every man and have control over everyone. And God's going to take care of it all. He promised the nation of Israel that he would avenge them and take care of all of that, and God will. And friend, a terrible day, a horrible day, that's going to be on earth. But yet here uh, the angel comes announcing that Babylon has fallen, that this uh, wicked, uh, this uh, great city has fallen. Verse number 9, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead, or in his hand, now listen, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture, into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. My friend, I don't know how, how more, how much more can be said about the reality of, of the, of the place of torment for the unbeliever. And it's going to be a horrible day when, when all of this, and we'll read about it in the, last chap, in the last chapters, how that all of this, the beast and the false prophet, are cast into the lake of fire. One day the devil's going to be cast there also. And all the unbelievers that have ever uh, died, and went, you know, died and went out to meet God, lost without God, they're going to be there. And it's, it's going to be a horrible realization. And they're going, to be, they're going to be tormented day and night forever and ever. Now, people don't believe that. They, they try to, there's people, preachers that preach soul annihilation that uh, once a man died, his soul, his soul goes to hell and he's burned up immediately. And then there's those that say it's burned up and they don't know how long it takes for a soul to burn. But I'm telling you what, friend, as long as my, as myself, as long as my soul, my my new body, my glorified body is in heaven. The souls of men that die without Christ, that die in the judgment of God, will spend eternity in hell in the lake of fire. And I, that, that's just a horrible thought for me to imagine, a horrible thing to think of, uh, you know, to think of being in, in such pain and agony for all eternity. It's not going to be just a, you know, just a, a, uh, a short time, but it'll be as long as I'm in heaven. And those lost people are going to be in hell. Do do people deserve that, friend? We all deserve that. But by the grace of God, I'm saved. Amen. By the grace of God, I accepted Him, and because I accepted His plan of salvation for me, I don't have to die and go to that place. But there's millions and millions that will reject the gospel. They'll reject the, uh, you know the. Uh, the preaching of the everlasting gospel, those that even have not heard will reject all of that. Men will never repent no matter what comes on them. Men will not repent because they're under the control of the adversary. Uh, verse 12, here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. Now, for him, we're blessed people if we die in the Lord. He's thinking of John as uh, he died in his sleep. His mama said he had the most peaceful look on his face when they found him. And I always say God's people die well. We're blessed of God if we leave this world by the way of the grave. We're blessed of God to have the, the, the dying grace that we need that God will give us, and we die peacefully as believers. The lost people don't die that way. They die with the, uh, you know, with the uh, torment of hell about to be upon them. And before the day of modern drugs and, and uh, things that uh, you know, doctors give people to keep their pain down and their, uh, you know, the feeling the way they do before death, there was, I've heard many horror stories of people that died and went to hell without God, and they died 
screaming in pain and agony as they were as they plunged into hell. Now, friend, I've I've said several times that I watched my grandma die, and she she wasn't under any drugs. She just was in uh, just didn't know anything for the last several days of her life. But when it came time to go, uh, she smiled, and she her eyes opened, and she smiled, and she uh, quit breathing and went on to be with the Lord. There was no struggle. There was no uh, you know no hard time for her because she was ushered into heaven by by the angels. But people that will not hear and people that will turn uh, away from God will face the eternal wrath of God, the eternal judgment of God. Not because God's a, God's a, a bad God. God made a way for all, for all to receive him and nobody to face this judgment. But yet untold millions will because they reject uh, God's plan. And then in verses 14 through 20, now this is parenthetical, all of this is. It's right in the middle. We're fixing in verse number, uh, chapter number 16. We're uh, fini- about to finish up the opening of the vials of the wrath of God to see what is about to be poured out upon the earth. And these last verses of this give a vision of the battle of Armageddon that's to take place at the end of the tribulation time. Now, there's two battles in the book of Revelation that we see. Uh, the one is the battle of Armageddon. At the end of the tribulation, and then there were one, the other is the, the battle of Gog and Magog at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the millennial reign. So uh, as we don't get confused about which one this is, uh, it's, I can always you know, determine here, and I can always identify one thing with the, with the battle of Armageddon that's not identified with the uh, battle of Gog and Magog, and that is the the blood run into the horse's bridle. Now, friend, you say there can't be that much blood, but, friend, there is going to be so much blood that in the end, that in the end, uh, that, that in the valley of Megiddo, I've stood there on Mount Carmel, as, Mount Carmel, as we looked out over the valley of, of, of uh, Megiddo, and you see that vast expanse valley that goes down through there, and to imagine, you know, to imagine that flowing with the blood of, of humans that will flow to the horse's bridle. That's, that's, a, that's, that's a lot of blood. But a friend, there's a lot of people that's going to die in this period of time. So we read this, And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. Who is this? Uh, this is the Lord. This is Christ. He's come, he, his clouds are his chariots. As he went away into heaven in the book of Acts, uh, they saw him going in a cloud. And as he ascended up into heaven, and he said, uh, you know, why stand ye here gazing? He that's, you know, he that's going away is going to return in the same manner. So in the same manner, he's going to come back to earth. And when he comes back, he's going to be carrying a, a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, thrust in thy sickle and reap for the Time has come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. In other words, the wickedness can hardly get any wickeder. The the, uh, terrible horror of this earth cannot get much worse, and the, and the, the world is ripe for a harvest. It is ripe for a harvest from God to clean up all the ungodliness that is going on. Verse 16, He that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle of the earth, and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire, and cried with a loud uh, cry to him that the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the, of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And this is the judgment of God that's going to fall upon this earth. When God sticks in his sickle, and when he begins to reap, and when he begins to to, you know, to, to uh, judge this world and all the ungodliness that, it, that is going on in this world. And when the, when the devil is defeated at the end of this age, of the, at the Battle of Armageddon, and we, when he is, he is stripped of all his power, and when he is cast into, uh, you know, when he is bound for a season, for a thousand years, he'll be, he'll be bound and secured. He won't have no dealings with this earth. Friend, that be a, that's going to be a, a day of horror for this earth when, when uh, the wrath of God falls fully 
upon this earth right at the end of the tribulation. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. That great winepress is what is going to, uh, that great battle, uh, that's going to be the great winepress that when, uh, the, when the killing is going on, when the slaughter is going on, that's going to happen. And when God's judging man and, and uh, the, the battle is being fought and people are dying by the millions, and as they die there in the valley of, of uh, Armageddon or the, uh, the valley of Megiddo where this battle of Armageddon is to be fought, uh, their blood will run to the horse's bridle. Now, I've had people try to explain to me how, that could, how you could explain that away, that these were not real horses. They were little miniature horses. Well, friend, if, if, that, you know, if, if, if that's the case, then it would still be a miracle. But I don't believe that to be the case. I believe the blood would run to the horse's bridle. Uh, why do I believe that? Because the Bible says so. And in this picture, this is, a, a, this is a, an account of a real battle that's going on. If the real battle didn't go on, if it was just a, something uh, fictional, you know, something that could not uh, possibly happen, and it was just a sign that but this battle is going to be fought. And if this battle is going to be fought for real, then all the components of this battle will be real. And it will be real bloodshed, and it will be blood that flows to the horse's bridle. Now, friend, that's going to be a terrible, disastrous time. But you know what? Even after all of that, people will still curse God. After all of that, people will, real, will still curse God. And I'm getting a little ahead of myself right now. But after the end of the millennial reign, when we come back to reign with Christ, at the end of <clears throat> the tribulation, when we come back with Christ to reign with him for a thousand years, uh, there's going to be that company that comes up uh, among the among those believers, uh, as we you know, as we go with the Lord and as we worship with Him, as we serve Him for a thousand years, the millennial reign upon this earth, there's going to still be those that are going to rise up and think they're greater than God, and they'll still rise up, and God will uh, call fire down from heaven at the end of the the millennial reign. And friend, it's not anything that human nature is involved in is corrupt. And that's why we fight daily as, as believers. We, fly, we fight our old nature every day. Because the old nature of man is not regenerated. We get a new nature. We get an entirely new man. And our new man is, that's on the inside when we get saved, and it wants to do right. But that old nature is never going to want to do right. So we battle that. We battle the old nature and the new ba nature battle. And friend, those that are not saved never understand the new nature. They don't have it. And so they will do whatever the devil wants them to do. And these in the last days will follow the Antichrist. And they will follow him to the ends of the earth. And they will get the seal uh, of 666 in their hand or their forehead. And they will follow him to their death. And then after all that's done, all that's said and done, all of this will be... Uh, you know, will be the beginning of eternity for those that don't believe in him and don't trust him to die in the battle of Armageddon. I'm glad I'm not going to be there. It's a horrible, wicked time that's going to happen on planet Earth. And then as we begin and we uh, go uh, through chapter 15 and begin uh, chapter number 16, uh, we understand more of the vials of the wrath of God. And I'll be honest with you, uh, we study this and, and we preach this to let you know and to, uh, for our own knowledge about what's going to take place. But I'm going to tell you something. I'll be, I'll be glad to get over to chapter 20 and 21. Amen. I'll be glad to get over where the good things are. Amen. Uh, this, this, if you, you, you it's all, it, you know, it's, it's all real and it's all going to happen and we're not going to be here. But friend, you've got, I guarantee you've got family that's going to be here. If it took place today, You've got family or friends that's going to be here at this time. Oh, my, I'm glad. I'm glad for the saving grace of the Lord. Glad I'm not going to be here. Glad I'm not going to be in the, in the, uh, the bat, you know, see the battle of Armageddon. I'll be in the presence of the Lord. Father, we thank you for the word of God. Blessed, I pray. God, help us always to rightly divide. And, Lord, as we've seen this portion of Scripture tonight concerning the 144,000, concerning... Uh, the, the reaping of the earth and the judgment of God upon this earth. 
God, I'm thankful to know that by your grace, I'm saved and don't have to go there. But God, many untold millions will uh, be in this time because they will not accept the gospel. But God, help us to be faithful, to spread the good news as long as we can. As long as we have breath, God, let us spread the gospel. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Everybody with us.